Hello there. We are now going to test the claim about a mean using the concept of hypothesis testing. So we have to be a little bit careful whenever we use hypothesis testing for testing a mean because there's two different types of distributions that we would use for this. So before I dive into that, please note that the following notation, if you see in that sample size, x bar is sample mean, and then the Greek letter mu is the population mean. Now, when the population standard deviation sigma is not known, we have to use the t distribution to find the p-values and to perform the hypothesis test. Remember, the t-distribution is kind of like the standard normal distribution. The two are practically identical the larger your sample sizes, but the t-distribution is a little bit more accurate for the sake of doing these sorts of hypothesis tests. So you use the t-distribution when the population standard deviation is not known. <clears throat> when sigma is not known. So to use the method we're about to use, the sample has to be a simple random sample, and either the population is normally distributed, meaning bell-shaped, or the sample size is greater than 30. So we're going to practice using the Compute tab, the t-distribution region of Google Sheets, to find p-values. <clears throat> so let's find the p-value for a right-tailed test with n equals 12 and a test statistic of 2.573. So let's start with a picture. Remember how to find the p-value? What do we use to find the p-value? We use a test statistic. Use that test statistic to find the p-value. <clears throat> I have a right tail test, so on your bell curve you're going to shade the right region. It's the test statistic that separates this right-hand region from the rest of the bell curve the area of that region is going to be the p-value. The area of the tails is going to be the p-value. In this case, we just have a right tail. It's a right tailed test. So you're going to jump into Google Sheets and you'll go to the Compute tab to the t-distribution region. <laughs> All right, so this is for Google Sheets now. Go to the Compute tab. Go to t-distribution, and you'll type the following in. You'll type in mu equals 0. You'll type in sigma equals 1. <clears throat> you'll also type in degrees of freedom. Remember, t-distribution uses a something called degrees of freedom. It's sample size minus 1. So 12 minus 1 is 11. And... <clears throat> You'll type in your lower bound and your upper bound. So you're trying to find area under the curve, so you're using x-axis data values. So the lower bound is 2.573, that's where your shading starts, and it never stops, so 6 nines is the upper bound. So now let's go to Google Sheets. Google Sheets, you're hanging around the Compute tab. T distribution region, 0 for mu, 1 for sigma. My degrees of freedom in this case is going to be 11. 12 minus 1 is 11. Lower bound is going to be 2.573, and upper bound is 6 nines. And look at that, you get a p-value of about to four decimal places, the 9 rounds up to a 10, which makes the 2 go up to a 3, so 0 0.013. 0 0.013. Point oh one three. <clears throat> so they asked us what the p-value is. The p-value is point oh one three. In the event you had a two-tailed test, meaning you had a right tail and a left tail shaded, you would double this. Just as you can use the test statistic to find the p-value, you can also use alpha to find critical values of our bell curves for our test using the t-distribution as well. In the compute tab, you'll still keep mu as 0 and sigma as 1. You'll still type your degrees of freedom, and then you'll input the area to the left. We'll do one example of finding the critical value coming up here in a couple examples. We don't spend much time on finding critical values just because the p-value method is so convenient. 
Remember, if you get a p-value, you compare it to alpha, job's done. For the critical value method, you got to do some comparison with the test statistic, and it's a little bit more work. <clears throat> now, to get Google Sheets to do everything for you, you type in summary statistics, statistics it gives you p-value, and then you draw your conclusion from that. You'll use the data list tab. You'll use the one variable confidence interval p-value t-distribution region, and you'll type in x-bar, s, n, and then your population mean under consideration. You'll also put your sign of your alternative hypothesis. So unlike a proportion, we have to type in five pieces of information. <clears throat> so radiation emission measurements corresponding to a sample of 11 cell phones were taken. Use a 0 0.05 level of significance to test the claim. You see that word claim, you should wake up. Claim that cell phones have a mean radiation less than 1. <clears throat> so I have a mean less than 1 is what they're talking about in my question. <clears throat> so what would your hypotheses be? Mu less than 1 would go where? To the null or the alternative? It does not contain equality. So it's got to go to the alternative. <clears throat> What's the opposite of less than? Well, technically it's greater than or equal to, but remember for the sake of convenience, we like to just write equal to for the null, always. So our claim, what they're talking about in the question is the alternative hypothesis. <clears throat> All right, so in Google Sheets, you're gonna have to type in a lot of information. Well, it's not really that bad. It's better than doing everything by hand. <clears throat> so in Google Sheets, we're going to be to the, we're going to go to the data list tab to the t distribution region for confidence intervals and p values. You're going to type x bar equals 0.938. You're going to type your sample standard deviation as 0.423. You're going to type your sample size as 11. You're going to type your value for mu, mu not under consideration, the value used in your hypotheses as 1. And then you have your sign for your alternative hypothesis, which is less than. These are the five things you need to input. And this is what's going to give us our p-value. <clears throat> Let's type these things into Google Sheets now. So Google Sheets, we're going to go to the Data List tab, and we're focused on the T distribution region. We use T because we don't know sigma. We don't know the population standard deviation. If we did, we would go down here and use the Z distribution region. <clears throat> so we know that X bar is 0.938. S is 0.423. Our sample size in this case is 11. Our value from you we're looking at is 1. And then our alternative hypothesis sign is less than. Look at your p-value there. That's a pretty high p-value, 0.3187. 0.3187. So 0.3187. Guess what we're going to do with that? We're going to compare it to alpha. We compare that p-value to alpha. If they don't give you a level of significance, we use 0 0.05. They told us in the question they use 0 0.05 anyway. So how does our infamous p-value compare to alpha? It's definitely greater than. So since we're not under alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject it. All right, so as a result, we're stuck on the null. We can't say anything about our, about our alternative, which is our claim. So the actual statement <clears throat> is to say there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that cell phones have a mean radiation level that is less than 1. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So once again, we failed to reject the null, and then our claim did not include equality. So we failed to reject the null. So we're either in rows three or four, and our claim does not include equality. That means it's the alternative hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that da 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 da. Here's an example we did with confidence intervals, but now we'll do it with hypothesis testing. 
In a test of the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol, we had 49 subjects that were treated with raw garlic. Cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment, and the changes in their levels of cholesterol. They had a mean of 0.4 and a standard deviation of 21, so that's from our sample. <clears throat> Testa claimed that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So we're looking at mu greater than zero. And then what do the results suggest about the effectiveness? So we'll state the claim, hypotheses, test statistic, p-value, and final conclusion. <clears throat> All right, so what I have here is let's state the hypotheses. Mu is greater than zero would go where? It does not contain equality, so it must go with the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, the null is going to be less than or equal to zero, or better put as just equal to zero. So greater than zero is what was talked about in the question, so that is my claim. Let's look at what we would type into Google Sheets now. <clears throat> Google Sheets is perfect for calculating and giving you the statistic, test statistic and the p-value. Remember, this is all coming from the data list tab, because we're just typing in summary statistics. <clears throat> it's important you use the t-distribution region, because you do not know the population standard deviation. <clears throat> so step one, what is your x-bar? Your sample means 0 0.4. Step two, what is S? Your sample standard deviation is 21. Step three, what is your sample size? 49. Step four, what is your mean value under consideration? Zero. And step five, what is your alternative hypothesis sign? It's greater than. We have what is called a right-tailed test. <clears throat> so we're going to type those values into Google Sheets now. So let's do it. Remember, we're focused on the T distribution region, so we know that our mean is going to be 0 0.4, our standard deviation, 21, your sample size, n, is going to be 49, 0 is the value being taken into consideration, and your null hypothesis, or your alternative hypothesis sign is going to be greater than. So look at your p-value, another big p-value, 0.4472. <coughs> 0.4472. 0 0.4472. And we have to compare that to alpha. We have to compare that to our significance level, which they said is 0 0.05. So what happens when you compare the p-value to your significance level? Well, the p-value is definitely bigger. So since we're not under the limbo, limbo bar, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. <clears throat> so, null hypothesis, fail to reject. Remember, we can't say anything now about our alternative, about our claim. There's not sufficient evidence to support it. And we say just that. There's not sufficient evidence to support the claim that with the garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So, remember, I failed to reject the null hypothesis, and my claim does not include equality, meaning it was the alternative hypothesis, so we say there is not sufficient evidence to support, to support the claim that da 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 da. <clears throat> Alright, let's do a kind of a tricky situation here. A simple random sample of the weights of 19 green M&Ms has a mean of 0.8635. How you like that spin on things? Talking about the weight of M&Ms. And it has a standard deviation of 0 0.0570. Use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim. So we need to wake up and we see the word claim. That the mean weight of all green M&Ms is equal to 0 0.8535. <clears throat> which is the mean weight required so that M&Ms have the weight printed on the package label. Do green M&Ms appear to have weights consistent with the package label? We'll run the whole hypothesis test. So basically we'll do everything we just did, except instead of using the p-value approach, I'm going to put a spin on things and we'll talk about the critical value approach. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to do a different spin on this. So we have a mean weight equal to 0.8535. <clears throat> when I write out my hypotheses, where would that go? 
that would go as the null hypothesis. <clears throat> All right, next order of business. The opposite of that would be to say mu is not equal to 0 0.8535. The null hypothesis is my claim. It's what was mentioned in the question. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to use Google Sheets. We're going to go to the data list tab. This data list time. <clears throat> and we're going to type in what is our x bar? 0.8635. What is my s? What is my sample size? What is my mean value under consideration? And what is my sign for the alternative hypothesis? And that's what we're going to type in the Google Sheets. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to type the following information 0.8635 for x bar, 0 0.0570 for s, a sample size of 19, and a population mean of 0.8535, and our sign is going to be not equal to. Now you see your test statistic here, 0.76 is going to be our test statistic. And you see your p-value, 0.4543. So I'll just take them both to four decimal places and let's write them down. <clears throat> All right, so I have a test statistic, which is going to equal 0.7647. And then I have myself a p-value which is going to be 0.4543. Now there's two ways to run a hypothesis test. There's two ways. Option one, you compare the p-value to, to your significance level and you make your conclusion that way. Option two is to use the test statistic critical value approach. It's the less commonly used method, but I do want us to have a little bit of fun with that method. So we're going to use that method here. I have all my important information that I need to find the critical value and to use the critical value test statistic comparison approach. <clears throat> Remember, you use alpha to find the critical value. So what I need to do now is I need to draw my bell curve. So draw your bell curve shape. And I'm going to shade two tails because this is a two-tailed test. Why is it a two-tailed test? That would be because you have not equal to for the alternative hypothesis. Two-tailed tests have both a negative critical value and a positive one. So how do you find it? You use alpha. If alpha in this case is going to be 0 0.05 how much does that leave for each of the tails you split alpha up into the two tails each tail has an area of 0 0.025 <clears throat> all right so now you're going to find a data value along the x-axis using area to the left so you'll go to google sheets google sheets the compute tab go to the the t distribution region mu is zero sigma is one degrees of freedom is always sample size minus one so 18 in this case and area to the left is 0 0.025 this will give us our negative critical value so let's see if we can find our negative critical value go to the compute tab zero one degrees of freedom is going to be 18 and our area to the left as we just discussed is going to be 0 0.025 and you'll notice that your critical value is negative 2.1 or negative 2.10, however you want to say it. So our negative critical value is negative 2.10. Because of symmetry, about zero, the positive critical value is 2.10. <clears throat> Alright, so we have our critical values. We ask for a positive critical value or a negative one. It's either negative 2.1 or 2.1. <clears throat> now where does this test statistic lie? Where does 0.7647 lie? Does it lie in the shaded rejection regions or outside of them? Well, 0.7647 
actually lies outside of the rejection region. It is not contained within the rejection or critical regions at all. It's in the center part, the non-shaded part of the bell curve. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. You would get the same thing even if you did the p-value approach. You would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So fail to reject. So we're failing to reject our claim. So there's not sufficient evidence to reject our claim. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the mean weight of all green M&Ms is equal to 0 0.8535. So what I did was take an alternative spin on things here. I used, instead of using the p-value alpha comparison approach, I used the critical value test statistic comparison approach. Since my test statistic was outside of the critical or rejection regions, I failed to reject the null hypothesis. So it's up to you to decide, do you like the p-value alpha comparison approach to hypothesis testing, or do you like this critical value test statistic approach? I mean, I have my own personal preference, but and I have a feeling I know what yours is too. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a different take on how a hypothesis test can be conducted. Other than that, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.